CataractCoach.com, an amazing rescue of a tough case. A nucleus behind the optic, unstable IOL, irregular pupil, prior RK cuts, wow. Here's the pre-op, you can see dislocated IOL, nuclear material behind that optic, one haptic in front of the capsule, one behind the capsule. This is a very tough situation, so... Our guest sir here, Dr. Steve Saffron from New Jersey, does these cases all the time. He's putting in a couple of trocars here to do a pars plane of vitrectomy. And here's going in with a vitrector, maybe, looks like, going taking out little small pieces from the AC. Viscolats are going in, and now going to get that lens up. Let's get the lens here above the iris. So he's going to lift this lens up above the iris. And with both haptics there above the iris, it'll be stable. And then you can explant it or figure out what to do with it later. But you don't want this to fall back into the vitreous cavity. So there you go. Now that you got both haptics above the iris, the lens is pretty stable. Going in with a vitrector here, notice how the sclerotomy is a little bit wider so we can do a phacophragmatome if needed, which is a wider instrument that doesn't fit through the trocar. We sped the video up here a little bit, but you can see just wolfing down that remaining lens material using the vitrector and kind of pushing it up against that optic of that IOL too to help mush it down the port of the vitrector. You also have to take your time on this if you're very fast on the vitrector or now here the phacophragmatome. If you're very fast on it, what's going to happen is you're going to chase the pieces off the tip. So you can use that vitrector and then you can also go to this bigger uh, phacophrag aspirate those pieces, bring them up to your tip. Here, there's the phago frag now, the bigger needle. And just a little bit of energy at a time and the pieces will come down pretty nicely. Obviously, before doing the phago fragmatome, you want to really aspirate out as much of that vitreous as you can and clean up all the uh, remaining um, posterior segment here. You can see the retina patients had uh, a lot of pan-retinal photocoagulation, so diabetic PRP in the past. And so this is not a completely healthy or normal eye. And now he's coming back up, cleaning up the, here the remaining capsule. And now it's time for a new lens. So this old lens is going to be cut, outside, cut up and taken outside the eye. Now that looks like a three-piece acrylic lens. Notice how he doesn't cut all the way through. He cuts about 90% of the way through the optics. When he pulls out one half, the other half kind of follows. Brilliant. Now watch carefully. He's doing a little bit more cleanup here with the vitrector to get these little pieces here. And oh, inadvertently, there's a little bite of the iris there. And so that's going to be addressed later. So marking here for Yamane technique. This is about 2.2 to 2.5 millimeters posterior to the limbus. Placing the 38 thin wall needles in at the appropriate angle. And now feeding th through that special haptic. This is that Zeiss 602 lens. So that has these special haptics that are a little bit more resilient and not as likely to break. And so, again, feeding this in here, being very gentle. And then once that's fed through the needle, both needles can be pulled out at the same time, thereby externalizing both haptics. Look at the cornea there. You can see the eight-cut arcade that was done as well. And so pulling that haptic there, holding on to that one, and pull the other needle out. There you go, two haptics. A little bit of cautery to create a flange there. And remember, push that flange into the sclera. Don't just leave it sitting as a nubbin underneath the conjunctiva where it's going to erode through. So once that's pushed in place, that looks pretty good. Good centration of the lens. And now it's time for some iris repair. So look, notice how the surgeon here, Dr. Saffron, changed positions. So he scooted up the scope. Now he's sitting superiorly just to make it easier to do this procedure. So using this 10O proline on that long needle and externalizing that, and you're going to do like a little mini um, running suture there. And so not a full purse string for 360, but just for uh, maybe 90 degrees worth. Pulling both of those outside the eye, both ends. This can be tied. You can do the fourth row pupil visor technique, or you can do 411 for extra measure of security. But you can tie that down, bring that knot inside the eye. And now with one forcep in the eye, you can pull that side. And the other forcep outside the eye, you get that knot cinched down the appropriate size. Again, make a reasonable pupil. Don't make it too tiny. You still want to be able to dilate the patient and examine the posterior segment. So cutting those suture ends off, and then there you go, just examining a little bit, see what he's got going on there. And then you can also further get a little bit rounding of the pupil by using this diathermy device, just do little micro bits of cauterization just to get the pupil the way you want it. With a blue iris like this, obviously it's more visible. But wow, what a beautiful rescue for this case. What an artist, Dr. Saffin, thanks. Always a pleasure to watch your incredibly tough cases. 
So if you have an interesting case you want to submit, come on now, cataractcoach.com. Click on the link up there. It'll say, doctors, click here to submit your video and let us learn from you. Wow, beautiful result, post-op, fantastic work.